Hello everyone, it's Pink Giraffe and I'm here with a game review of Kazat Beasts. As a huge fan of the monster taming games like Pokemon, Temtem and Coromon, I feel like this game really stands out so well so I really wanted to review it for anyone that is interested. Let's start with the storyline. Out of nowhere you appear into a new world. In this world the people come from different ages and even universes so it does bring a nice element and it is quite varied than the typical storyline of hey you're a kid go to an adventure grow up become champion so i really appreciate that cassette beast went into a new different direction that different time and universes direction also allows the lore to be more unique and that comes in play with the monsters that roam in the wild a lot of the designs of the monsters are influenced by human concepts. For instance, one of the mascots is the traffic crab, a traffic comb embedded into a hermit crab. It's very cute. Not only that, but out of the 14 types, there are yes some elemental things like plant and water types, but there are also some more artificial types like plastic or glitter types. To keep all these wild monsters in check, the town has equipped rangers to roam around and defeat the wild monsters. To become a ranger yourself, you will have to defeat 12 of the captains. There are something more like bosses, which are archangels. These are kind of special monsters which are more unique, larger, more powerful and have unique combat styles. If I had to compare them to another game, it would remind me a bit of the titans in Coromon, but I feel they're more interesting, more balanced and more fun to battle. The Archangels do play a key role in the lore, but I will not spoil that because you will probably have fun exploring the game. With some aspects of the storyline covered, let's focus on the gameplay. The first element I would like to discuss is the overworld exploration. Throughout the game, you unlock new abilities as you record more monsters. These abilities, such as gliding or swimming, allow you to explore new areas and also figure out some puzzles. When it comes to battling, the approach is also interesting, right? Basically, you have a cassette recorder, you put a monster tape in it and bam, you are the monster. Because you are fighting alongside a partner, you will always be battling either a 2v1 or a 2v2 scenario. I feel like the 2v2 approach is becoming more common in games and it's great because it allows for more nuanced and interesting dynamics in battling. One of which is the elemental advantages. Unlike games like Pokemon, Temtem, Coromon and Nexomon, you don't deal more damage or less damage for elemental effectiveness or ineffectiveness. Instead, the game does it in a much much better way because it applies buffs or debuffs. For instance, a fire attack on a plant type monster will leave it with a burn. Contrarily, a plant type attack on a fire type monster will emit smoke and therefore give it evasion for 3 turns. The other key element in battling and perhaps one of the unique selling points of Kazat Beasts is fusions. As you build relationship with your partners, you start unlocking fusions. Once your fusion meter is full, you can fuse both yourself and your ally into one much stronger monster. Since all monsters can fuse with one another, there are over 14,000 fusion combinations, so there is a lot of there to explore, and since we were mentioning relationships, you can upgrade your relationship with me by clicking the subscribe button. Kind of its own section in the review, I want to highlight some of the interesting mechanics that Zapbeast really do well. The first is experience. Instead of each tape having its own level, you have a tamer level. That means if you catch new monsters, you can switch them in and they won't be under leveled and that makes it a much fun and less grindy experience than other games. Not so much of a mechanic, but more of a setting that I'd like to highlight is the difficulty setting. One of the options is to scale the AI levels and that is very useful for the open world of the game because if you're like me and accidentally miss the first couple of captains and you want to return to them but not be over leveled, adjusting the AI level scaling is definitely the right option to do. The third mechanic I'd love to highlight is the sticker system. Now each tape can have up to 10 stickers at a time, which makes already the combat much more varied. Each sticker can be peeled off any tape and can be applied to other tapes with some compatibility based on the typing and species. 
you might apply the same of the passive sticker to create very unique combinations and that makes Kazabi's sticker system very fun and innovative. Now let's talk about the graphics and the sound of the game. I have to admit I'm not very picky when it comes to graphics or sound design, if I like something I like it but I don't really dwell too much on it but I know it's a big factor for some of you. For me the art style I do like it, it is pixel but it still feels fresh. And when it comes to the monster design I know it's a bit of a hit or miss. Some of the monster taming fans really enjoy nature inspired creatures, you know, something more like Temtem which is much more elemental based, whereas Cassette Beast has more creatures inspired by human things, like we mentioned the traffic crab. When it comes to sound and music, I don't have too many complaints, I did feel some of the songs were a bit repetitive, but I did like that there is an option to disable vocals. One of the biggest questions I'd like to ask is how long is this game? For me, it took me around 20 to 25 hours to complete, which is not a very long game, but it's also less grindy and more entertaining than others in the genre, and with its price point, I think that's a fair amount of gameplay for the main story. Now, it's not just the main story though, because you can do post-game activities. Bootlegs are kind of the shinies of Cassette Beast, and each monster can have 14 different bootlegs, one for each type. For instance, a fire traffic crap, an ice traffic crab, a glitter traffic crab, so maybe you want to get all the glitter types. Another thing you can do post game is you unlock custom modes and you can play randomizers, kind of you can play nuzlocks with permadeath. When I compare Kazat Beast to other games, I think it is one of the more replayable ones because, first of all, it is not that long, and secondly, it is not as linearly structured because it is more open world you have a varied way of going about it in each new game. With all that said, let me summarize my pros and cons for this game. Cause Beast is one of the games that does open world much better than any other game in the genre. With the scalable AI settings and the map design, there is more leeway in how you explore a new world. Another great point is the elemental advantage system. I mentioned earlier the buffs and debuff system is really great, and not only that, you don't have to remember all that, because the UI tells you when you're about to attack what buff or debuff you will be applying. One of the main advantages of the game is that it is not a live service game, there is no PvP, and yes, for some players, PvP would be nice. However, we've seen in other games like Temtem that the PvP often impacts the PvE experience. The lack of PvP is actually an advantage because it allows insane and crazy combinations for stickers. Despite all the pros, there are a couple of downsides to the game. The biggest caveat to the game is the sticker and tape management. There isn't much ways of sorting things out and it can get pretty tedious to swap around things. The second is the Switch release. Now I have played on PC, I don't know exactly how it runs on Switch, but based on reports, the Switch performance is a little bit buggy especially with controls and crashes. That said, I don't really know too many Switch releases that have fared well. And if you're really interested in the game, if you can get it on other platforms, that is always recommended. The game has 97% recommendation on Steam. I think it's a must buy for monster taming games, it's definitely one of the most enjoyable things that I've done. So if you think you will like it, just get it. If you enjoyed this review and found it useful, please make sure to click the subscribe button and like this video. I thank you for watching, bye bye!